Hello and welcome to my stream. My name is Little and today I am going to continue to read the webcomic of Homestuck. We are at page 3697, we are in Act 5 still and we almost have the middle point of the comic. Let's see if we can get to, to the end of Act 5, but I doubt it. I think we might need another stream for it. So a lot of stuff happened in the meantime. And we are just looking at Dave, who's looking at his dead brother while Theresius contacted him. In. So let's see the conversation. Get all calibrator, GC begin trolling turn to Godhead. TG. Strider! Oh my fucking god. What? What do you mean, what? Hello, where are we? We just got done talking and agreed it would be awesome if you didn't bother me for a while. You know, like, well, I guess I grieved over this brutally murdered Watch family member or something. Hello, Panda. Oh, that's right, I forgot. It was five seconds ago. I think that was hours ago for me. I'm a little foggy on all our chronological, chronological shenanigans at this point. There has been so much crazy stuff going on here, I have lost track. So you're officially going non linear with me, Sam. We are just forfeiting all rhyme or reason to this unmitigated clusterfuck, I said it. Dave, your entire existence is non linear. Don't be so melodramatic. Oops, okay, in the future I'll try not to pitch any sort of dramatic forbooding over the cat Dave was slaughtered laughed once. Did you love him, Dave? No. But he was your strange human man, Lusus, who taught you to like cool things like swords and puppets and moving really fast. How could you not? Puppets aren't cool, they are shitty small fake people who haunt your dreams and grin like permanent assholes. I was making a joke about being all broken up about it. A guy can be sad and make jokes at the same time. You are sad, but not broken up about it? I don't understand exactly. But you said you were grieving. I said we agreed you'd leave me alone to grieve. Didn't say whether I actually would or actually am. Well, are you? I'm grieving to the max like a widow and dead husband I land behind these chill as fuck shades my face is having this crazy attack of the sads. My boo is fucking bananas, can't you tell? Ah, no, I can't. You don't sound sincere, but it's so hard to tell what layer of irony we move from reality your flippant remarks are supposed to be. I am betting you really are so sad, no matter how hilarious and aloof you think you are being. The truth is a mystery, tucked behind the pursed lips of shitty Riddler. They will be loosened only when presented with a conundrous grandeur of rigid, insoluble puzzlecock. Blah, that makes no sense. I'm sorry you are so flustered by the mere mention of glittering mystical crypto dick, it honestly makes me think you are not ready for the truth. Dave, your perplexing euphemisms involving what I presume to be loot and vaguely intriguing portions of human anatomy, I think are not as hilarious as you probably believe. And in any case, you may be immersed to learn I am not totally in the mood for your dumb smart as the horn for glory. Horns for glory. I have lots of my own problems here and they are big, big problems. So why don't you just tell me what you are thinking for once? It's pretty simple. I'm just thinking about how I'm gonna take the sword. Yeah, I never really got where you wouldn't just pull it out. Filthiest thing you ever said, huh? Forget it. Pulling swords out of things isn't how I roll. I am not John, remember? I am not following. I am not a hero. My will was. John is. I am not. Yes, you are. No. Yes, we all are. I am the hero of mind. You are the hero of time. That is who we, who we were created to be. Fine, it's a title we inherit as flagging babies or whatever, but what have I done to earn it? Pretty much nothing but horsing around through time and swindling retarded alligators out of their life savings. Is that sword's coming out of his chest, it's coming out clean. Taking it vertically means drawing more blood, but horizontally means a clean break. Check it. No, don't. Oh, Dave, I'm sorry for you. He's just not believing in himself at all. Dave, break. Also, after a while, you can you can just read your basis dialogue without problem. It just becomes second nature to you. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> He's lo he lost his glasses. He was doing the period of the handle, what he always was talking about. Dave, get up! No, fuck that. I am lying my ass right down here for a while, looking slightly less cool than I make myself out to be ordinarily. <laughs> you saw that one coming, yes? You must stand tall. Only a true hero could pull off such an acrobatic fucking pirouette off of that handle. That is basically what I just did, isn't it? Yes, 
that's what I'm doing here. I'm making a point of making every little thing take place what was once mentioned in passing, no matter how seemingly trivial or pointless. That's how all the best adventures get strung together. You haven't heard me bleed like a goat for I wanna declare your most purpose yet, have you? No. That was something that was mentioned at some point by someone or forget when or why. I bet you were on cotton pins and needles waiting for that, aren't you? Are you about to bleed like an earth goat, Dave? No, fuck that. Then will you at least get up? No, fuck you, go away. Hello, Stag. Ugh, why do I do this to myself? What, subject myself to the moody nonsense of conventionally candy-blooded foul mouses? I don't know, why are you even talking to me anyway? Aside from the fact that several hours from now you apparently forget I don't need consolation and ought to be left alone. Maybe it just so happens that for once this isn't about you. Maybe I am the one who needs some help, has it occurred to you, Mr. Cool Kid? Oh, anyway, I remember now. Sorry, everyone went kind of shit hive here, and I got bitten, I think, and I kind of forgot where I left off with you. Bitten? What? But I remember where this all fits into the chronology you with your bro here. This was just before you begged me to finally show you how to reach God tier, so I did. And then you got mad at me, so you decided to do to go do your own thing for a while. And since then I have been up to my pointy little nubs in suspense, intrigue, intrigue and betrayal. That sure sounds like a dumb way to say a thing. Almost like Egbertian in elegant stupidity. That he and Egbertian is soft like shh. Oh, Egbertian. Okay, thank you. Hehehe, <laughs> oh, why would I get mad at you? Oh, you'll see. Okay, but yeah, I guess it's about time you showed me what's up with my allegedly futile god terrification. How long ago was it that you did your coin flip thing? I don't even remember. I was getting sure you were just bullshitting me and had no intention of ever mentioning it again. Unfortunately, no. Maybe I should take the opportunity to apologize in advance. For what? Hmm, I don't think it would be constructive to go into it before it happens. Before what happens? You mean god tearing? Does something go wrong? Everything goes according to plan, but that is all I will say. Remember, this conversation is kind of not supposed to be about you. I know, the idea is unprecedented. It's practically unthinkable. I know. But I mean, okay, we can talk about your troll problem, but this is pretty important here. The god here thing, and whether I can actually do it or not. Might be kind of hard to tell on account of me chilling face down on the pavement, and also because downplaying feelings is the chief rule of cruel, but I'm pretty pissed about this, which is weird. It's weird to feel mad? Are you too cool for that too? No, it's not weird to be mad. It just feels weird. It feels like I'm the only one who is. And the only one even contemplating taking Jack on. Even among your group of eye weight canushing shitheads. Hey, what? Actually, you are right. Turns out we really do have a lot of shitheads here. And also, as it happens, the worst one is the one who happens to be planning to take him on. Well, okay, and that would be a bitching line to switch the subject to start talking about your complicated problems that I kinda wasn't done. Fine, but for someone who just told me to fuck off, you are sure, bending my ear suddenly. But okay, I mean, isn't that what heroes should be doing? Working to take down the bad guy without a whole lot of this fucking grandiloquence and these huge sweeping plans that got nothing to do with fighting him. Like always biding our time and tiptoeing around the unbeatable god boss. John's too nice to get mad. Bo spends all her time calculating. Too focused on Machiavelli employs of sabotage to try anything drastic Jade is. I don't even know. Probably more liability if she got it in her head to take him down. If anything, I bet she just needs protection. What are you saying here, Dave, in this conversation that is still being about you? I am just wondering. When does someone actually step up? Jack's got shit to pay for. If that is how you feel, then I think our two problems are not really different. We are both presently concerned with justice. Yeah, I guess. I guess it has been on my mind. Maybe I'm supposed to be a hero and rise to the occasion, because there seems to be this little persistent voice in my head nagging me about it. And this thing someone's gotta pay. And it's hard for me to disagree. Then it could mean one of two things, or both of the two things, like it did for me what things. It could mean that the age I'm presently influencing you is a conscience and or an exile. This is so completely illegal. I'm pretty sure I don't even have an exile. I've never heard any voices or anything. Anyway, you don't need a voice in your head to tell you this shit is just like so completely illegal. Wait, why did I just say that stupid thing I said? This atrocity cannot go unpunished. 
throw whoever is responsible into the slammer. Slammer means jail, by the way. Dave, I did not realize you had such a passion for law enforcement. I must say the shocking development is coming dangerously close to giving me a case of the vapors. Oh, we are seeing Dave's eyes for, for a change, by the way. This is how they look like. Yes, he has wet irises and pretty sick eyebrows. No, I mean... Okay, so it came out wrong. What were we talking about again? Bringing Jack to justice? Right, someone has to make him pay. Can't let him just go unpunished. If I can figure out how to reach the god here, maybe I can be the one to throw him into the slammer. The slammer? Slammer means jail. I know what the slammer means. You call it the slammer when you are extra angry at crimes. By the way, I think Dave is one of these 13 year olds who had their voice breaking really, really early, and this is why I am trying to speak his voice a little darker. Because he already has a manly voice, while John is pretty much still at the... I'm still having a little childish voice stage. You call it the slammer when you were extra angry at crimes. Take note of that important principle, because I'm deputizing you even so you were a kid. Are you taking notes on this important principle? Jesus, get a fucking pen or some chalk or whatever. I think I'm following. You are going to find Jack and put him in jail? Wait, fuck, what? No. Dave, I know you are likely discombobulated with grief over your fallen man, Bolusus, but that is extremely silly and doesn't make any sense. I know it doesn't, I'm just saying. What am I even saying here? Shit. It fits for them both. Dave definitely has a deeper voice. Yeah, 100%. but only while I am away from my jurisdiction, which I think is forever. Bring the criminals to justice, young deputy. Each mutinous agent must pay for their crimes. I'm still not sure. You were talking about throwing Jack in the slammer and rambling about justice and telling me to get pens and such. Not that I am complaining. Okay, forget the slammer stuff, that was stupid. It is about justice, so. And since no one else seems to give a shit about that, it apparently falls my jurisdiction now. Not just going after Jack, but all the mutinous agents responsible for crimes. Agents? Holy shit, why do I care about that suddenly? Anyway, that's more shit that popped into my head just now, so okay. I have other duties to attend to. What's this? Show Pestalock. Well... No ask cronies are exploitable. Are you saying you have a plan that involves targeting them? Not really, no, anyway. It's not like being mad about this and tankering for justice is even the only rational thing I'm currently hot and bothered about. I have other duties to attend to. Like what? I must explode this ridiculously illegal edifice. What's an edifice? <laughs> oh yeah, it's a uh, aimless renegade. Oh. Farewell. This is what he's writing. I've got to explode this ridiculously illegal edifice. Oh my god, what are these words I'm saying? You have to explode something? Never mind. Are you referring to your plan to blow up the green sun? Oh, yeah, that's gotta be what I'm talking about. Probably. I need to shut up now. I'm sounding like an idiot and my head is starting to hurt. Why don't you talk about your thing now? What just a thing do you have to do? You mean it's actually my turn to talk? Yes, but I was beginning to forget my problem listening to your highly enjoyable befuddlement. Just please tell me your justice problem and make me stop saying stuff. Farewell. Farewell? Wait. No, I mean, god damn it, I'm not leaving. Farewell is not even a thing I would ever say. Jesus, what am I, a Victorian poet? Can you show me a little respect and assume any time I say something stupid it just means I'm temporarily being inexplicably retarded? That's what a real friend would do. Thank you for looking it up. Large imposing buildings, this is actually... This actually works. <laughs> because if we remember, this is a frog tower. And this is a jersey and the jerseyans are not fine with frog image, shall we? Hello, Tavazi. Where are your arms? Okay, Dave, I will show some sensitivity and cast suspicion on the intellectual merit of everything you have ever said. Thank you. I will further demonstrate my friendship by dominating the rest of this conversation with lengthy accounts of my emotional tribulations, leaving no space for you to submit any amusing outburst. That sounds awesome. 
quiet now, where was I? Justice problems. Oh yes, of course. You see, our aims are not that dissimilar. Our pursuits of justice, I mean. But yours is motivated by anger in the heat of the moment, which is blinding you to the consequences of attempting something very foolish. You are far too cool to succumb to anything like that, which is why you will come to your senses shortly. My situation is a little more complicated. It's less personal. So once it was a grudge which propelled ever vividly. Now its resolution has become a matter of practicality, if not professionalism, business-like. The way a true legislator conducts her prosecution state that she knows that centuries ago on my planet, legislators were not confined to stuffy court blocks arguing cases before his unavailable tyranny. Oh shit, are you fucking serious? Yes, oh so shush, I know you are assessing me due to my use of terms unfamiliar to humans, but it is true. They were deployed throughout the galaxy to apprehend criminals by any means necessary. Now why God said they are like your alien death law warriors who were sorted like bounty hunters in olden times for the simple to decipher through context. I thought I told you to be quiet. I'm monologuing here. Anyway, they would not rest until the suspect was in custody one way or another. They would gather evidence over the course of the investigation, compiling a case to be presented at the trial. Should one be held before the final submission of the guilty corpse to the civil authorities? Personal feelings and vendettas did not matter, nor did even the nature of the crime. Only justice did. They were selected for their cunning and martial prowess, and for their ability to understand the minds of the criminals they sought. This is why the burden has to be mine, I think. I am the only one who knows how to handle her. As such, she is my responsibility. She. Shoosh! Okay, I can't even make little interrogative quips to grease the wheels of your monologue. Oh, yes, it's okay. In fact, it's very helpful. Who do you think? Ah, oh, dead Nepeta. Spider troll. You are correct. The spider waste one of all. You've decided to take her down then. I guess so. You don't sound that spiked about it. Well, I'm here talking to you about it instead of actually doing it, aren't I? Are you feeling guilty, like second guessing whether she deserves it? What exactly? Hasn't she done enough terrible shit to want legislation? That is not a thing, but yes, the case against her is overwhelming. More than you even know, she's completely out of control now. She has murdered at least one of my good friends, and possibly several others, I'm not sure yet. The circumstances are a little fishy, but my investigation is ongoing. Yeah, so... Terezi is investigating the case and pretty much thinks that the murders that Gamzi, that Gamzi and everything did are also Whiskers doing. Additionally, I have discovered he is complicit in Jack's rise to power. When I first learned he came from your session, I mistakenly blamed you all and took it out on a helpless Eckbert. But if anyone is to pay for releasing that demon in both of our groups, it is her. Are you sure about that? Yes, and she knows I know. She has been taunting me, trying to stir up our old rivalry. That is what this whole John vs. Dave thing has been about. There is no John vs. Dave thing, so I know. Not really, it's just a game. But the game is serious business to her. Like it was during our role-playing days. And just like then, she's ruined everything by taking it too far. And in spite of all her past crimes, these are not even the most important reasons to stop her. She has decided to fight Jack herself, which is an extremely dangerous and stupid thing to do. Sound familiar, Dave? Are you going to stop me too, then? Hunt me down and lawyer with the West Sea for my own good? No, I'll just let you try to reach the god here and then decide for yourself. Are you saying that I won't make God here or I won't be strong enough if I do? Objection! What? We are talking about you again. I motion that all Dave centric testimony be stricken from the record. Lay motion over what the judge wants to see where this is going. No, he doesn't. You know perfectly well. He doesn't give a shit. He will clear this court block if he does not have order. He swears to Jesus. Okay, fine. We can keep obsessing over your fucked up Christmas sister if you want. It's not like that. Do you think she stands a chance against him? No. Then what's the big deal? I know that her go get your shit wound by Jack and that justice happens that way. Because I'm quite sure that if she goes to find him and will tip him off to our location in the wheel. I have seen it already. That is why this is no simple vendetta. Bringing her to justice is critical to our survival. So why don't you go do it? Because I'm not sure if I can. You mean you can't beat her in a fight? No, it's not that. It's just that when the time comes, I'm not sure if I will be able to kill her. 
I saw trolls with all about gratuitous murderings. Yes, it's true, we are supposed to reveal in bloodshed as we grow up. And he seems to be embracing the rite of passage with reckless abaddon, as I would expect. Grabbing the bull by the horn, so to speak, it's a little intimidating, because I'm not sure if I'm ready for that, which I guess is normal. Uh, you're asking me to reassure you about that, because I seriously don't have a clue. It's okay, Dave. Still monologuing, I guess. I'm not so much worried about not being ready as I am that. I might not actually, I might not actually want to be ready. Maybe ever. Maybe there's something wrong with me. I don't understand. I thought you were in some kind of apeship over the macabre stuff. Like being all cutesy about executions and smelling chubby blood and such things contrived to get a guy feeling vaguely uncomfortable. Was that all an act? Not an act, just fun. I like fun, Dave, and I also like games. Don't you like fun and games? Of course, the fuck not. Liar! Didn't you say? Didn't you say you've killed people before? There's a big difference between manipulating people to their doom with trickery and killing someone by your own hand. It is a bit like having to face your own death. And discovering the difference between leaving the responsibility to someone else and doing the dirty work yourself, maybe you'll understand someday. Yeah. Hey, Reza, you are talking a lot. Okay, I'd like to help you out, but I don't know what advice I should be giving. To a member of a murderous species who's gunned you and going off to justice murder a murder happy murderer who's done lots of murders. It feels pretty weird and inappropriate for me to be the one to tell you fuck yes, go for it. She's got this huge murder with her name on it anyways. With cruising right at her down come upon boulevard, so I don't know. Or you want me to tell you to be a better human or to be a better troll. I can't tell you what to advise me, jump ass. Maybe I'm not even looking for advice, PC, but just want to talk to someone about it. Alright, well, all I say is. Maybe if you kill her, at least we can finally stop obsessing over her. Sign. Yeah, fair enough. Why don't you just do what you think you have to do? And I'll do the same, speaking of which. Alright, you'll be bugging me about showing you how to reach the god here soon. Prompted by this very conversation I imagine, who'd have thought? These times when Anakin's completely blindsided us have practically never even happen. I know. So I had hang up now with future humans and start pestering present you about it. It is it is said how it works. Yes, and I make sure not to reference anything said here to keep it simple. Exact like in an offhand way that'll seem retroactively logical to your future self. I.e. you right now. If for no other reason then it'd be boring as hell to rehash it. That sounds about right, but what do I know? You are the time guy after all. Luckily, I will not have to participate in these charades this time around. Does luck actually matter? And a surprised face. And exit. Everything is so wet. Oh, this was the end of year two. Yep, 13th of April 2011. We move this one. Yes, for everyone who doesn't remember, earlier it was usual to have multiple discs for your video games and you had to switch them at certain parts in the story. Insert disc 2. Disc 2 is missing. This is not good. Where's our disc 2? Let's find out. We unlocked the album Medium. Oh, Evasi is looking at it. Keep playing anyway. You have no idea what the hell this thing is or why you would need another disc. You just capture Logit and proceed. There's justice to be done and you are running out of time. Evasi, proceed. Doesn't seem like we can control too easy. <laughs> oh my god, it's so objections from, from my attorney. You cannot control too easy. How can you possibly expect to play this game when you have lost the game list? All you can do is watch what she decides to do. Okay, and let's watch her. You find a note stuck to the floor with Nepita's claw. It appears to be addressed to you, written on a page torn from the Journal of Whiskers Ancestor. Her taunts are becoming increasingly fragrant. 
It also appears to be written in purple blood. She wouldn't dare harm three fishies gamsy, would she? The sword was almost more than you can bear. You're going to throw the book at her. Okay, to easy read the note. Hello, Terezi. I did see Gemzi dancing here, yeah. Also, this sounds like from Secret of Mana. I want to listen to this a little bit more. This is hundred percent inspired by Secret of Mana. Like Toby Fox loves these old old school games, so yep. Tewazi, wake up. You cannot wake up because you were not actually asleep. You were just taking a breather in this nice cozy pile of horrifically mutilated scale mates, which were gathered here to break your fall for some reason. You wonder where you are. This is a fancy looking room. Doesn't look like a place you would expect to fight on this meteor, at least not in any strictly canonical capacity. Also look. Little callous here. Too easy. Examine surroundings. The dapper kiwi suit and gentleman is quite familiar. You are almost positive he made an appearance in that very crowded dream you had recently. Where did he go? Something in this room smells funny and fast. This was Gamzee again, right? Shadow is only there briefly. Too easy. Climb stairs. You cannot ascend. The staircase is suffering from a catastrophic horn clock. And now also from a kettle clock. Crazy. Exit door. The door is locked. You will either need the key or to break it down with force. You would need to achieve an especially heightened state of determination to pull that off, so. <coughs> you have been completely hornswoggled. This whole thing was a setup from the start, a trap deployed by a cunning mastermind. All of the clues are adding up, the blood, the note, the flagrant displays of tricksterism and shapery. The identity of the puppet master behind all of this is now painfully obvious to you. Oh my god, look at the little cow behind her. Spider troll. Terezi, play records. You select appropriate crimes over music to set the right mood. With this kind of atmosphere, it is highly unlikely that any crime will stay unsolved for long. Okay, let's listen to it. For a little bit. Does it troll cops? Doesn't sound too bad. This has a mysterious feel to it. Oh, this one launched Jesse. This is fun. This is also not good for crime solving. In labeled record. I like this one, but I also don't think it's good for crime solving. What's X1? Oh, this is that one that we just heard, just in a remix. And Midnight Crew. I would say it have to be water so white music for this. But no, Terezi, we move Midnight Crew record. No, no, the sword of villain Cornwall on this will not do it all. The mood is just not right for figuring out crimes. You put the record back in its sleeve. <laughs> Little Kel again. Terezi, examine cover. What? Who? Who's this douchebag, right? Yep, douchebag. What 
tippen zu und er klick hier. I'm gonna give you a great song now by Eddie Morton, uh, one of my favorite ragtime era uh, performers on record, who is actually a, uh, a former Philadelphia police officer uh, before he um, made it big on, on uh, vaudeville and then became a recording artist uh, with such record companies as Victor and Columbia. So here he is with a song he did in 1909 called I'm a Member of Midnight Crew, Mr. Eddie Morton. Cotton old for cut player, the wheel run. Oh, this was a song that we heard earlier. What's this old style of music? I hope the song isn't copyrighted anymore, but it shouldn't be because it is over 100 years old. When stuff is over 100 years old, it isn't copyrighted anymore. But they could record music in the 19th century already. I find the Toby weather fascinating. I'm a member of the midnight crew. I'm a night owl and a wild bird too. Home with the milk in the morning. Singing the same old song. Rise with the moon, go to bed with the sun. I leave the bed and you'll miss all the fun. Bring your wife and yeah, truly the song isn't even that bad. It's kind of fun. Would be matching it in better sound quality. I never shall forget the night I made six robbers run. Although I didn't have a knife, a blackjack, or a gun, I proved myself a hero of a very high degree. I ran for home, and six of them were running after me. I'm a member of the midnight crew. I'm a night owl and a wise bird too. Home with the milk in the morning. I fear the song will be stuck in my head for the rest of the day. It's pretty catchy. <laughs> Mr. Eddie Morton, and I'm a member of the Midnight Crew. I've done 101 years ago on the uh, Victor Grand Prize label, and that's um, Victor number 16324. Okay, after the little history lessons to old records, let's continue with the comic. Before you can make heads or tails of who exactly this douchebag is, something rolls out of the sleeve. It appears to be a very small record. It's so small, what is such a small record doing in this great big sleeve? It's a CD, not a record, right? No, oh, it's, it's a small record, really. You got Homestuck Disc 2. You cannot get over how tiny this record is. It's adorable. You wonder what sort of music it plays? Look, says Gamsey and Callaghan. Too easy. Play tiny record. Mm, this didn't work too well. Predictably, you scratch the surface of the disc. What were you expecting? It's almost like you don't even know what a CD is. Oh, it's it's a CD. It kind of looked like a record because CDs normally are not black. With the disc damage, who knows what sort of effect it will have on the data. Better store it somewhere safe to prevent any more mishaps. Too easy. Capture log disc. It should be perfectly safe from any similar kinds of damage was secured in your quetch and sniff modus. Too easy. Examine chests. 
you have spent way too much time calibrating the ambience of your investigation not nearly enough time investigating. It is one of the most common pitfalls to be being an investigator. Aside from literal pitfalls which you actually fall into. Uh, thank you. Where we... <laughs> it's nice to see that you are there even if your connection won't let you. There are two chests in the secret room, nothing out of the ordinary. Chests are everywhere in this lab and people find it all too tempting to sneak their personal belongings into them for safekeeping. That is until the goods are stolen shortly after by those who can resist looting every chest they encounter, which is everybody. Maybe these ones contain clues? Therese, open chest. You got your neophyte wet clear role-playing outfit. What is this doing in here? You have not worn it since your flapping days. The only part of which you kept on hand was a stylish pair of glasses, which of course since the incident has managed to become a regular accessory. But you cannot imagine how someone could have gotten their hands on the rest of it, surely. A crafty and reserveful criminal is at work. Spider troll, spider troll, spider troll. Terezi, wear a suit. You done the gap of the legendary Legisless. Legisless Herator. It brings back memories of many successful fantasy prosecutions resulting in the real executions of rival players. Those were the days. Therese, open other chest. You got your Pyro Spite plush. Pyro Spite was your scalemate sidekick during your campaigns. He was a model of loyalty, friendship and righteous retribution. More than could be said for another partner and justice. There's no doubt about it anymore. She is clearly baiting you into confrontation. You mean baiting. Therese, hug Pyro Spite. Squeak. You embrace your old friend, releasing a mighty and majestic squeak. It has been too long, old friend. You vow never to let him out of your scent again. What? And... Pyro Spite was replaced with little Kel and Therese is not happy about it. This puppet is becoming a new scent. It appears to exhibit the same incredible puppet fastener properties which Dave's had. Must be some form of universal puppet enchantment. It couldn't be possibly be the same one because it would just be insane. Hey, where did Pyro Spite go? Therese, look up. There he is. How did he get all the way up here? He has always been quite a slippery scale wreck. Maybe he was reminding you to check out the note. You almost forgot it was up there, what was all your furious investigating, most of which has involved fooling around with records, hugging plush toys and cosplaying as a childhood heroine. Therese, read it. Read it. Stuffies forever. <laughs> Just as you thought, it is a message from Whisker summoning you to do battle. It is written in Gamzee's rich jelly smelling blood, but it is her handwriting for sure. Her quirk is present, leaving the matter undebatable. But why the hell does she want you to bring the stupid puppet along? She's so weird. There's a journal entry on the back. It probably isn't the slightest bit relevant to the current situation, but you guess it couldn't hurt to read it anyway. Therese, examine journal entry. Show journal lock. I suppose I have to get used to writing with this hand instead. I now do so in captivity while I bring my all to bear on the immensity of the subject loss hijinks. I took the gesture as plain a verbal of my prosecution's futility. With a low neophyte assigned to the task, how could I view it otherwise? I was sure they'd drawn from the bottom of the deck, not intending to squander more component mercenaries on one who'd made a show of outclassing them all before. But, it disco but I discovered too late that Red Glare was a wild card all along. How is one allowed to be raised by a dragon in this era, let alone one of such middling blood, the sickly you of a gutless civil servant? Those of her case are typically pleased to mount a sluggish cola bear, cola bear or some brainless walking spleen for during pretty expeditions to plaster Caesar's notice and gambling property. By what fluke was this woman granted such a weapon, permitting her to look so easy in the delusions of whiteness? Something blocked the light of the unbidden moon, treating the harbor to darkness more grim than what fell the season's apogee. I made the mistake of looking into its eyes, each like a sun concentrated into a small jewel, as two hot garnet savings to a black wheel. I shut mine quickly, but the more sensitive of them was burnt irreparably. When I regained sight in the other, there was only wet. My fleet was on flames, the nigh of fight was on deck. Pyro spite, she mentions to her ridiculous forced grin. She wanted me to know the name of the beach which was able to consume my loser's hole. My dice were in the hold below, not that my present luck would consent to a favorable roll anyway. I made a move for my blade. 
She took my arm, which I'm sure she kept as a tiniest of snacks for a ostentatious custin custodian. Maybe she meant to prove she wouldn't need me in Ivan's to have my submission. Bound of three, two, one, or not. I wonder how well she knows it's not what I do with my arms she has to fear. I await my trial. Insert disc two. It's a little scratched, ouch. It's all in the video, <laughs> all in the gif. <laughs> See ya, ascent. Sis, Roof now brings a puppet. A goopatic fucking pirouette. Well, did you notice something? Very long ago there was an animation very similar to this. I think the Daxons are implied to be her squeaky shoes. It's time for a showdown. Just talking to Rose White now. Oh yeah, he was he was sending this to Rose's PC to talk to John because he was losing his PC again. Much fanfare was made of the trial, more than I would have dared to hope. It seems my luck has been returning of late. Oh, I love how this is too easy sign. The high blood truly intended to make a spectacle of my conviction. They filled the court block with peasants' revenues for the comeuppance of, of a blue blood. I wasn't about to deny them what they came for. These are the ancestors again. It was kind of the authorities to supply me with phalanx of such impressionable spectacles. The weak wills were nearly as thick in the air as so the rust in the veins. Funny how my other senses seem to have piked since exchanging glances with the dragon. What an extraordinary specimen. How I have come to covet the creatures and the view and my fleet. I know too well the whispers of a dangerous new infatuation when they beckon, but I digress. Don't forget the power of the Scorpio sign in the trolls as mind control. It was simple enough to nudge the hostility of the low blood from one aristocrat to another. The subjectless could not have been pleased, but nor could they have been altogether unamused, I would expect. I wonder if this was part of the unfathomable game. I'll never understand their riddles. I only regret I didn't get to hear the opening statement the neophyte had prepared against me. The case she compiled from all that evidence she burned must have been damning. I bet her remarks would have stung worse than when she severed my arm. She certainly would have shown me greater mercy by taking the other instead. Alas, I mock to disguise the extent of my regret. 
Had my escape not necessi necessitated her demise, you would have made a lovely wivel. If you'd only discarded her childish preoccupation with justice, we might have made a striking scorch. Had we inched blacker, we'd have torn wet miles across the land and sea. Unfortunately, the only miles to be found through a bureaucratic calling were those of wet tape. And though ensnared, one was eventually bound to be choked. With the court block cleared, all that remained to obstruct my freedom was his honorable Taiwanese himself. God says that are looking so cool. Upon reflection, Wetlia showed the foresight of a true seer in seizing my arm before the trial. Oh my god. It permitted a fair fight. So because she could write all this, this, this probably means she lived, right? So I was free, I had no fleet, no matter. With a gambling against decimated, I embraced the turn and fortune and pledged to put my sea grifting ways behind me. With any luck, the skies will be my future, my thoughts again return to the dragon. But first, I was in need of temporary refuge. I sought it with the expatriate. It's just like a terrible sign. <laughs> He owed me for the sweeps of protection I provided after his brazen defiance of the high bloods. It was perhaps the only such covetous stand ever taken against a superior by one of his superstitious pedigree and I'd not have bothered sticking my neck out for another. But the admiration he'd won naturally was sin as he personally bemoaned his treason and banishment and I was saddened to find this habit holding strong even now. I wonder if he still believes she was worth it. And this is clearly Equius and sister. Repairing my arm would go a little further and scurrying his debt with me. Even though I came with both intact, I might have whipped one off and put him to the task just to hold to his blubbering. Darkly, I was always a skilled mechanist and the work proved an adequate destruction. So pacified, he listened to what I had to say about my recent travels with the law, in private spite and what I come for in truth, the treasure he'd been keeping safe for me. Oh, it's a white orb. I cradled the oracle in my synthetic hand as if praising by... by way... weight? I think it's weight. As if praising by weight the mystic qualities that still concealed. With my vision eightfold seared away, I was as blind to its secret as the old doctor was to its present whereabouts. I'd learned to keep it cloaked from the awareness of the man who once called me his protege, a backhanded term for demon from a smug manipulator. Locating his so-called dark pockets was the only gambit I had encountering his milk tongue doublespeak. The expatriate for indiscernible reasons seemed naturally surrounded by such a void in the doctor's awareness, and there was uniquely fit to inherit the orb. The doctor could not see his treasure, nor I into it. I considered what to do with it for a while. Should I find Pyro spite by consulting with the oracle as I'd done so often to steal fortune from my adversaries? I guess exploiting some technological means of gazing through its surface may have been simple enough, but I hesitated. Every expedient granted by its counsel, so never instantly, came at a price. Knowing his nature, I am surprised I only now recognize it as yet another instrument of a spurious benevolence, dangerous by way of selective divulgence. The sense of infallibility his oracle brought me was superficial, and in hindsight, and in hindsight weakened my readiness. Knowing my fate so far in advance, I took red glass dread lightly. The greatest mistake I have ever made was asking the orb when I would die. But as I revisited the prophecies around this unfortunate query, something struck me. I thought of the man I would have as a maid split centuries from now. He was said to command an army of beasts, the one it called the Summoner. Joe Sherlock. If my obsession with the dragon should continue to burn for so long, would he be the one to assist me in taming it? I did not have enough knowledge to ask the right questions when I had supported the opportunity. Were that the case, I might have asked it if it would be his rare abilities of communion that would bring Pyro's right under control. Would it be on account of my influence, and if so, would I exert this influence by taking his will or winning his heart? These are details I would have given no second thought in drawing from the orb. A curiosity of force usually too much to quell, but now I have thought of the summoner often. 
I have been troubled to know that as one so common blooded, he could not possibly have hatched yet, nor will he wiggle from the caverns for many sweeps. So I must have patience to take up my role in his story of heroism. It is a tale which reads to me as so lifted from a child's story, yet I know I'd be a fool to doubt that veracity entirely. He would rise to the ranks of the cavalry reapers and assume command, having proven the most skilled and fearless of them. He would exhibit a remarkable probation, the sort only recorded in myths growing, or perhaps simply revealing, a striking pair of wings. His army thus inspired would spearhead a major rebellion, truly one at least on the scale of the sectarian revolt crushed by the high bloods. Who say after forfeit its mention, uh, forbade its mention, or any invocation of the heretical symbols at all, even in private journals. That is why I will stick to the fable of the summoner and not risk another execution with the even oblique reference to the compelling tale of the sufferer. Resolution to the summoner's mutinity is foggy, as I only understand what has been related to me through the brief answers I sought to solicit. Ultimately, the ire of the condens would be such that in the settling dust of the conflict, she would banish all from the homeworld except Si Yang. She would scatter all who reach maturity to the stars to fight her wars. I presume to keep them occupied, existing in a less centralized state from which such a group may arise. This is still an incredible notion for me to consider. I cannot imagine how she would come to enforce such an upheaval in our civilization. So I suppose she will have on her side the advantage of an unparalleled lifespan and the leverage extended by the hideous psychic prongs of her deep, undulating monstrosity, that is, until it chooses another little witch to serve. Nevertheless, I take the prediction as truth and find it amusing that a homeworld dominated by children will be the great summoner's legacy, one of them, at least. More importantly, and less amusingly, his legacy will might be nice. You see, I first learned his name and I asked it who would be the one to kill me. I have never spoken or written of an out of content for the prophecy. But to do so here, my final entry for this journal. I took this to be a pitiable fate, and scored the orb for any means of escaping it, or at least to survive a little dignity from the tale of my downfall. Alas, it meant no consolidation for my vanity. But as I sit here deciding what to do with the damnable little sphere, I understand my error. I was not in failing to chart a course to future events to turn my fortunes tight, even so many sweeps from now. It wasn't believing the future was mine to know and fortune mine to control. If this hero is meant to breathe life into my embittered heart, and if he is to earn the right to run its true, then so be it. For him, I will commit to this page my highest expectations. And for what precious uncertainty is left in my future, I have in you my vigorous anticipation. The oracle I will resolve to part with. I will conceal it in a crypt bearing the sign of the expatriate with a map to its location hidden in this journal. To whoever finds it, be wary, for the truth it tells may leave its new keeper blind as I was. So, no more. So the whole story that we just heard, we kind of have perils with what happened to all trolls, but in reverse. And I think this is really, really interesting. S-Flip. Do we have to? No. Oh, we can't even read anything, it's too glitchy. Okay, the way do you sing? There's a lot of blood on the ground. And it's glitchy. A fucking Jewie. Hey, what a nice outfit. Same to you, mind I mean, Frisker. As much as it pains me to admit, your fruity open cherry suit smells delicious. Thanks, I see you finally raised up and started taking this well. Will you see if it was harder until you probably were to get getting correct? I'm not in character. That's a serious business, Frisker. See, I bought my deadly cancer, my cool coin, and everything. Yes, I can see that you come for revenge, then I thought we settled all this a long time ago. No, not revenge, justice. 
for the disposal murders of innocent murders? Like plural? Whisker, please, do not try to deny it. I found the evidence. Telfos and Peter, even Gamsey, I mean, really, Whisker, Gamsey? Gamsey isn't dead, you dope. He flipped out or something and now it's glitchy. <laughs> Well, yeah, okay, there was like one murder I was responsible for. You know, Tephus? That was me, I guess. But that's it, he's the only one I killed, just that one guy. Face palm combo three times. Because, no, you can't beat Jack. All that will happen is you will eat him here and he will kill us all. He will follow your Shukubi Pixie Twelve with his keen canine snout. I have already seen this consequence in my mind's eye. Fascinating, why don't you tell me your terms already? Forget my Pixie Twelve, at this rate my snobbing will lead him to us, lol. What I propose is simple. I flip. One flip. Heads, you stay. Scratch, you go. You are kidding, right? You want luck to decide this? Maybe you forgot who you're dealing with, I'm the thief of flight. You really expect me to lose a simple coin flip? I've got all the luck, remember? I did not forget. What would it be, Marquise? Just flip the fucking coin in your fight. So I really, really like the song. The disc is too badly damaged, you can no longer, plong, can no longer play Homestuck. Well, yeah, let's quit. You aren't forced to quit, you will not be able to resume playing unless you can repair the scratch in the disc. You will need to seek the service of someone who is capable of fixing a scratch. A scratch doctor, if you will. Wizard doctor. You rang? That was a joke. Of course you didn't. I don't have a doorbell, remember? Ha ah, ha! Hee hee! Ho ho! Please, come in! Oh yeah, now we are starting this. Welcome to my apartment. I trust you'll find my voice is more palpable against the stakeholder. I continue to be an excellent host. I'm expecting two more guests later. First one and then another. Make yourself comfortable in the meantime, but don't touch the candy on the table. That is reserved for one of my guests. Meh. Let's have a look at this disc. She really did a number on it, didn't she? It's virtually unplayable like this. What a shame. There are many moments trapped on this disc which you would have no doubt found to be quite exhilarating. But yes, I can fix it. What happened with the disc? It will take time, so I estimate, by which I mean I am certain by way of omniscience that when I am done we will have reached just shy of the green circle on the card above. I am sure you have already presumed this mark represents the beginning of Act 6. The disc should be ready to run in time to witness a critical event, a confluence of sickly interwoven human circumstances which have been meticulously arranged by myself, influenced to a much lesser extent by you and by an even more negligible degree our heroes. The scratch will be healed in time to watch these heroes put into motion, yes, the scratch itself. If you don't mind waiting here while I complete my repairs, I will tell the rest of the story. I will show you as well as I recover data from the disc. But the visuals I supply will be nothing more than approvided snapshots, and my telling will be abridged. Immortally notwithstanding, I'm not going to live forever, you know. Tick. Ticking of a clock. And then for once in my life, time is at a premium. Let's go on with it. Where were we? Talk. Never mind, I figured it out instantly because of my unfathomable intellect, limitless knowledge and mind-boggling charisma. Granted, my charisma had less to do with it than the other qualities, but it didn't hurt, did it? Here, I'll show you. Tick. The seer of mind had challenged the see for flight to a simple game of chance. If the result was the undamaged side, the thief would agree to stay. If not, she would go. Talk. The result of the flip was left inconclusive, at which point you decided to pay me a visit. But the inconclusive should not be confused with the uncertain. The actual result was trivial. It was a constant across all timelines. Boss, the seer and the thief uses. <clears throat>
The thief used her abilities to steal the fortune of her opponent and forced the flip to yield what she regarded as the most favorable outcome. The seer anticipated this move correctly. This is why I don't care much for gambling. While a sucker is born with each tick of the clock, a cheater is born with each tock betwixt. Also because it is boring and I am already a very wealthy man. Tick. The seer relayed her terms through the generally understood argot of an assassin. The result go, while at face value would suggest the thief was allowed to leave, was actually the seer's code word for the threat of death. This was obvious to everyone, including the thief. Talk. While the thief turned to fly away, making a show of claiming her prize, the seer would stab her in the back the moment her guard was dropped. This was her plan. Not a particularly clever tactic in its own right, but its ingenuity didn't dwell in the novelty of the ruse. Nor even the neutralized probabilities in the game of chance. Spike or Lottery was on play. Tick. Naturally, the thief knew this was her intent all along. She knew the seer would have understood the outcome to be wicked and that he likely intended to kill her as a consequence of the fixed result. This was to be seen as an implicit dare to the thief to allow the flip to fall fairly, something which the seer knew the thief's ego wouldn't allow. And the seer knew the thief knew all this as well. Just another pair of cheaters attempting to play with their cards face up. Amateurs. Talk. Each was gambling, not with any vehicle of probability which had been eliminated from the equation, but with each other's intentions. The thief indeed took the seer's bait, stealing the luck needed to affect the flip in defiance of her dare. And in turning to leave, she then posed the dare of her own to the seer, challenging her to back up the implied threat. This was the thief's gamble. She wagered the seer would not be able to go through with it. It turned out she was right. So ends a tale of Rivoli. Well, almost, there's a bit more, but in order to understand its proper conclusion, we should first catch up with another of my other protege, from whom I'm expecting a message shortly. The other seer, the other hero of light. Tick. And talk. We are on Skya. And the clock continues to tick. And talk. Round two. Strife. Here we left our human, Hibo of Light, yes, this was in the last stream. She flew away to take vengeance on the Noir's side of the scratch, that is, the one less angry and dangerous. The one not yet unmotivated by a compelling duel. Compelling, but not particularly challenging. The seer wouldn't win this duel. My apologies if this spoils the outcome for you. I can't speak as discreetly about such matters against this canvas. Tick. I warned her. I want my neophyte footage not to stare into that ball. Talk. I told her about stairs. <laughs> It's a uh, little language again. I guess it probably means it keeps happening. Moving on. I remind you that the pacing of my account will be characterized by a reduction in granularity from what you have come to expect by way of an undamaged disk. You will imagine the remainder of the duel to be sensational, and I will continue my steady distribution of facts as if they were pieces of candy poured from a bottomless right hemisphere. The duel ends, the seer dies, the slayer departs, the heir comes back to life. This outcome was hardly a point of suspense. It would be disingenuous of me to present it as such, and I will not belittle your intelligence with such a tawdry narrative ploy. It would be rude, and I am too well dressed for that kind of behavior. If there truly stood some chance of permanence to the heir's corpse hood, I can hear you asking now. Hello, Lux! How could this moment later come to pass? And for that matter, what sort of story would this be with our human hero of birth made to stay a cadaver? Definitely not one the alpha timeline would allow. And what sort of spectacle would you be if you'd forgotten the terms ruling the conditional immortality he won with a previous similarly unceremonious impaling? I told you, there was some important information that you have to keep in mind. 
He'd done nothing to earn martyrdom. By which he might laud his fall as heroic. Nor had he tasted notoriety to secure a death one may pass just. And while I can't give you my assurance, I'm reasonably convinced of this much. When the hero first dies for good, it won't be as a scoundrel, but not for lack of a devoted mentor. If I had served as his mentor directly, rather than as, than as his mentor's mentor's mentor, he may have stood a fair chance of perpetrating something underhanded. At the very least, his jokes might have been better. Instead, he got her. The other hero of light, always bugging him, bugging and fuzzing and meddling. What's her deal? Let's find out. I mentioned there was a bit more to her story. I believe it's time to resume it. I trust you won't mind if I step away for a moment. I have important guests arriving very soon. If you need me, I'll be up here, making sure everything is in order, which it already is, and keeping an eye which I don't have on the clock, which I don't need. Tick. Well then, let's look what Whiska is doing. He's flying away into space. Talk. She's flying to Skaya. Tick. What's... There's so much glowing here. Talk. Oh, Jack, of course. She wanted to go fight Jack. Bonk. Tick. And talk. The clock keeps ticking. Jack just vanished. Ah, she's disappointed. I locked Elwing's Homestack Volume 7 and Mobius Troop. Apologies for my preoccupation. I have managed to pacify the rowdy of my two other guests with sugary little black dogs so that I may continue my narration, but only briefly. In a moment, I will go stand over by my typewriter and teach my neophyte protege the consequences for taking advice from strange men over the internet. While I continue to attend to my second guest, who is you, from an earlier point in the story. Remember? We met here in my apartment a little while ago. At that moment, I was busy hosting you from the future, who is you right now, but I did not mention this at the time. I would have introduced your past self to your future self and vice versa, but it is a well-known fact that past and future selves tend not to get along. A ghost host would never tolerate the potential for discord among guests. In this whole scope, I'm simply the best there is. Please don't be alarmed. Past you was just leaving. Where was I? Of course. The two heroes of light had challenged the same Jack Noir, the one straddling the scratch and about 20 hours of his own time to a circumstantially simultaneous pair of duels. Circumstantial simultaneity is a concept more complex than a temporal analogue, and is valuable for examining the properties of paradox space. It is the agent responsible for the major cosmic event, which pre-extinction Alternians came to refer to as a great undoing. The same concept rules the innumerable lesser events by which this critical moment shall be catalyzed, including the break, my employer's arrival, the detonation of a very powerful bomb and my own death. It is an abstraction weaving together the fortunes of otherwise perfectly disparate chronologies, such as those bound to a pair of distinct sessions. It is not fully comprehensible to a mortal mind. And the length I will go to explain it to you will not extend beyond this sentence. But the story will. The Slayer was, for the moment, unmotivated by the thief's motion for a compelling duel. The sight of the, of the scratch he opted for a more ruthless and calculating policy of extermination. On his arrival, not about to repeat the mistakes leading to his banishment, he quickly obliterated all twelve planets, followed by prospect and Earth to weed out those who might outsmart him in the same manner. With his little fanfare, he seized the opportunity to follow the thief's trail quickly before it dissipated, and destroyed the hideout in the wheel. And now, knowing her position, he would soon return for the duel she wanted. But not without a pair of trophies. Tick. And talk. 
mein Gott, das Game ist honking. Again, so we fuss into Wapchen, my conversation with the girl went a bit long, slightly exceeding the one second I scheduled for it. This is where events begin to outpace my awareness. The deeper into this dark pocket we explore, the more I will be forced to speculate. I rarely have cause to relay, rely on probability, but luckily for you, my guesses are better than anybody's. And tick. So many photos. I have always believed that a good storyteller should keep a comprehensive record of past events on hand. A scrapbook of personal significance, for instance, from which he may piece together current moments from past ones of a similar if not identical nature. It's more efficient. And talk. It's also logical, since there's essentially nothing new in paradox space. Everything that can happen is either a visual or substantive reproduction of something which has already transpired on a timeline, offshoot or otherwise. And if I'm going speculate on this day, well, I might as well make use of earlier clippings. For the Slayer, this was round one against the Hero of Light. Talk. All I really need to do is flip a turn race like so, and we have... Round two. The thief would probably roll her dice. And just as probably, due to her impressive thought of stolen fortune, she would have a 100% chance of rolling the most favorable result. Ordinarily, this result would be almost impossible improbable. The odds of the roll would be 1 in 16,777,216 to be specific. And to be less specific, 1 in 8, why, how do you pronounce this? Where y equals 8. He <laughs> he. Tick. Fire alarm. Talk. Oh my god. What's happening here? Sorry for the flashing lights, really. And we tick again. Okay, this sword is looking metal as fuck. And we are doing talk again. In round two, the slayer wouldn't be not merely compelled. But challenged, if my guess is right. Challenged by one claiming godhood before reaping the prodigious spoils from striking down a formidable endgame foe. One with the guile of a cheater, the luck of a clover, the hubris of a mentor, and the drive known only to the pathologist Pathologically competitive. I believe he'd be challenged. Yes. Tick. But not outmatched. As one who shares a slayer source of power, my protection must give him the unambiguous advantage. But even so, when I continue to not be a gambling man, that didn't stop being a thing that was true or anything. And talk. I'm reasonably sure that if I was, I wouldn't bet against her. Moving on. Let's pull back from this ever narrowing dark pocket. All this uncertainty is wearing thinner than the only pair of pants in an immortal's wardrobe. I've never much enjoyed navigating the waters of alternative possibility. The path which alone has my absolute mastery is the Alpha Timeline, a continuum I define as that which boasts exclusive rights, both to my birth and to my death, to circumstantially simultaneous events. Any divergence from this path to my knowing will taper into blackness like locking roots. But if I was a seer, such offshoots would be fully within my domain. And if I was a seer of mind in particular, synaptic causality would be my speciality. A seer of mind would have given you a more reliable account, perhaps, but then, she would do many things I wouldn't. And tick. A seer would support her allies in battle not with her weapons, but her vision. She would sift to, to dross of her comrades' poor tactical inclinations and examine the grim consequences. A seer would not charge in so free headlong but directed as a conductor with a baton. She would have the sight to excuse the obvious gambits and find the path to victory disguised cleverly as setback or even imminent defeat. 
she would behold the fortunes of friends and foes in totality and appraise the contrivance of luck itself. She would know its mines were not to be plundered, but simply explored and charted carefully. Talk. Oh my god, what's happening here? <laughs> Again. Truthier would know where luck is a given, where it is absent, and most importantly, where it doesn't matter at all. Tick. The 14, huh? And she would know victory doesn't matter in a reality where all else is doomed to fail. And the clock goes talk. What sort of story would this be with our knight and seer made to stay cadavers? Certainly not one the alpha timeline would allow. Thank you for coming where we have a nice night. Tick. Not one she'd allow either. So this is what really happened. Talk. And the blood is coming. Tick. And talk. This is a really, really big uh, pool of blood. Tick. And talk. Oh, Kaka has seen it. Tick. You think you are so cool, bro. Sloppy makeouts now on the roof. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, I guess Gamsy got him out. Got him on, but making me think that it's too easy, he wrote this. Talk. Oh, can I hear so looks are also there. Tick. Was Twilight already a thing in 2011? Because I have the feeling Kanaya is kinda like a reference and a parody to that. That's <laughs> how she started to glow after becoming a vampire. Talk. Oh, and the honk. I have to go on YouTube. That's my clown honk. Honk. Another one? And tick. Americans Group 80 began trolling Tentacle Therapist. TT. John, you are heading into the blackout, so I won't be able to see you until you leave. But don't worry, I can still sense you are there, because of awesome powers, remember? Smooth, smooth, the tingy computer like that, by the way. That was an incredible leadership you showed. Now I have to contact you through Rose, thus exposing me to the risk of actually having to talk to her. Your carelessness has put the heroes of light in a very awkward position. John, I hope you are satisfied. Haha, <laughs> just kidding, she's obviously a little too preoccupied at the moment to be sussing me. Just borrow her computer and talk to me when you get the chance, okay? I will be waiting. Talk. Something's happening to John. I like how the hatter is also telling a story. Oh, he's all right, I haven't even looked at it. Show pester look. Times eight, times eight, times eight, times eight, times eight. <laughs> all of the dots, John. All. 17, 16 million, 17, 17, 102, and 16 million of them. Still dead, huh? Why well, are you too busy weeping over her corpse to pick up the tad set and answer me? You can't fool me, John. I know you are not staying dead for long. And it's not just because I can clearly see you are alive in the future. You see, we are both the best there, and therefore we have special privilege when it comes to mortality. It's hard to keep. God, dead for good. We can only die under very specific certainties. Didn't I mention? Yes, tick tock. Yes, 
the only way they can die is a heroic death or just death. Nothing too glorious about the way you just died, I bet. Let me guess, even after all my lessons, you allowed yourself to get sucker step right pretty lame. I mean, lucky for you it was lame. I guess being lame pays off and dying a hero is what gets you killed. If you were a hero of West reached God tier, he would have been completely indestructible, lol. Damn, I forgot I was going to stop whipping on that guy. Since he got stepped through the chest and died, haha, <laughs> whoops. Anyway, I figure you're probably safe from a just death too, since I'm pretty sure you haven't done anything all the despicable yet. <coughs> oh, sorry. Stop. I don't know for sure, but I'm betting that if I go to fight Jack, it will wipe out all the bad things I've done. I think if I die, it'll be a hero's death, so it ought to stick. Pretty good motivation to win the fight, though, don't you think? One way or another, I think this will be my last big challenge as a gamer. As such, I would like to pass my dice on to you. It is very important to me that they stay in good hands. John said he continues the legacy and that of my ancestor. 8 to C8. <laughs> Use the code, I'm sure I can count on you to make something awesome with it. Slick, I'm serious. Please stop. And John is getting revived. Is not alive yet, man? You better hurry up. She probably doesn't have much time left. Trust me, what you're going through and just right now isn't much fun. Okay, I guess I should mention why I'm trying to contact you now of all times rather than just skipping ahead. Remember how we talked about your backup plan, the one you have devised to defeat Jack and the off chance I fail? Well, it's not going to work if Rose is dead, is it? You have to wake her up, breathe some life into her, do the windy thing with your lips. You know what that means. Oh my. Gotta kiss her. Don't worry, I still can't see you, so there's no reason to be bashful or anything. And since we are a couple of professionals here who are focused on winning, we both know it doesn't have any meaning. Not like I would be jealous even if I could see. Why would I be? Or maybe that didn't even cross your mind? Haha, <laughs> man, why am I even talking about that? Uh, this. <laughs> oh my, oh my, oh my, this will not do it all. And I need a quick bathroom break, so see you soon. And I'm back, and yes, she's not subtle. Let's just forget I said that. This isn't really how I wanted this conversation to go. I guess I was assuming you'd be talking back by now, so now I'm just talking and talking and spinning my real device like an idiot. Maybe I don't actually know how you wanted it to go. I guess I could just jump up and skip ahead on your timeline and it'll talk to you when you are alive. That would make sense, so I guess I will do that, but then, maybe if I did, I wouldn't actually say what I wanted to say, so I will just say it. Pardon me while I adjust the narrow fenestrated wall. To be honest, I'm nervous about this fight, but I'm still going through with it for a lot of reasons, to save my friends or at least the ones who are still alive. Oh, and I guess to save reality itself from being totally fucked up, there's that too. But I think what's motivating me to win this fight the most is the possibility of getting to meet you when it's all over. Maybe I can finally put all this terrible stuff behind me. And I won't have to worry about being the best anymore, or proving what a ruthless killer I can be. Maybe I can try out whatever is supposed to be normal for a human. Who knows, it might not be as boring as it sounds. Maybe, if you are not too freaked out by all the bad things I've done, or the fact that I'm an alien, we could go on a date. To redirect the view from this impropriety, oh goodness, <laughs> the big brown dog scratch is having trouble. Don't worry, it could be a human date, whatever that entails. No weird alien stuff, I promise, and no killings or murders, or even talking about killing or murders and that, just whatever you like to talk about and think is cool. 
I could even be persuaded to watch more of your absent human films. Do you like any others which features a drugged human with a long hair and wounded arm? You know the one, the sweaty guy with the mutilated animal and the speech impediment. Those would be tolerable to watch, I bet. There. Oh, Snowman was the other guest, no wonder. Well, think it over. Before we go, I'll get in touch one more time later on, when you are alive and maybe have something to say about it. Oh yeah? Sorry about your adult male guardian. I wasn't trying to be deceptive by not telling you. I decided not to because I didn't want to be the one to make you sad about it. Was it selfish of me? I don't know. You would have found out regardless, like we all did. There are things we care about that we just have to leave behind. It just sucks for those who aren't in as much a hurry to leave it all behind as me. Wait, someone's coming. Hang on. I'm a wonderful chaperone as well as an excellent host. Shoo, <laughs> he's just chewing her away and he's just vanishing. Oh god, she's wearing her RP outfit. What the hell is she up to? And she's got a dumb dragon doll and everything. Guess she means business this time. Damn it, I've got to go deal with this now. Anyway, if you actually get around to reading any of this, thanks for listening, John. Well, it was really great luck has any say on the matter. We will be meeting up in no time. Just please consider what I said. Okay, later! Yes, tick tock tick. Stop! Clocks destroyed. Thousand one of thousand. Faceball and Tombo time zero. Over crying out loud. So yeah, Whiskers' death was just so she won't revive. Slick, I can tolerate many things from a guest. Card manners, Equocrius womanizing, murdering the help, casual arson, even atrocious candy bowl etiquette. She's dead. But it is a desecration of a priceless timepiece where I must draw the line. I'm afraid I must now insist that you take your beating quite personally. Break. Whisker, wait! Oops, hold on. Tentacle server PSTT ceased pestering Arachnus Group AG. Ectobiologist EB began pestering Arachnus Group AG. Hey, are you there? I did what you said, but I can't tell if it worked. Hello? You didn't fly off to fight Jack yet, did you? I hope not. Anyway, all that stuff you said sounds fun to me. I have health of the cage flicks in my library. I do not even care that you are an alien. You see, cage is a universal concept which unites us all. Well, we haven't flown away. I will look forward to your message in the future. It would be nice to talk about all the stuff that happened. Anyway, why? Oh god. Hey, oh my fucking hell. This is so insanely awkward and sad. What is? Hang on. Hacking Soup AT, he's trolling Ectobiologist, EB. Yeah, it's... At this point you kind of start to feel for Whisker and John and the things that could have been between them if the circumstances were different, right? Heads. <laughs> oh my god. I think Slate Slick just lost a few of his teeth along with a big amount of blood. Casting your channel says CG began following active by the GB. Hey, <coughs> Carcat, that was you. Where's Whisker? She. She what? Shit, I feel like an asshole for reading this whole thing. What whole thing? You mean what she wrote? Yeah. Why are you snooping around her computer? Because, well, okay, so let me ask. Did you both actually like each other? Um, like I mean something vaguely with something actual genuine mutual sentiment or whatever, not some lopsided pining bullshit. What are you talking about? Did you like her, you winsome catted shit mouse? Is what I'm asking. Well, yeah, why? Okay, that's fine then. We'll talk about it later. Talk about what? I need you to be able to think straight. We have important shit to go over and I don't have much time. 
John subconsciously, I could fix her. This guy completely consciously, I could make him worse. Yep. And so on. An uppercut. Alright, like what? Plants. What plants? Never mind that. First, get out of the fucking blackout hole, place where I can see you. Leave now, I'll contact you in a while, once you've landed. Landed where? Low heck, obviously. Oh, obviously. Well, how else do you think you're going to cause a scratch it yet? Do you even have any clue what's going on? Wait, of course you don't. You are wearing pajamas and giggling at clouds like each one was shaped like the rudest bit of naked anatomy a human can recognize. No, I'm not. I mean, yes, I'm wearing some pretty nice pajamas, but I know lots of things like about the tumor, which I've already recovered. Wait, I mean, <laughs> color zero 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 the tumor color. Wait, fuck. I mean, that's good. You know, the big bomb and some other stuff like that. I'm totally in the loop. Wait, awesome. Now get going. So I have to cause a scratch, huh? Okay, I'm done here. Talk to you in one second for me. One long, windy fucking journey for you. No, oh, windy, not windy. Casinogenesis CT. Cease touring, ectobiologist EB. Casinogenesis GB again touring, ectobiologist EB. Okay, hi. You let me down, slick. Let's get down to business. Aren't you going to ask me how my journey was? No. It was long and windy, but a lot of fun. <coughs> <coughs> I really like flying, it's so much fun. Oh, I bet it. It's just the biggest fucking blast a guy can have without a pair of faint globes secured in his two trembling fists. You haven't tried it? Every douche got to fly but me, even the cripple. May he rest in peace, I fucking guess. Wait, is that the guy who Whisker killed? Oh god, you actually know about that? You know what? I guess the fuck up trying to understand you and her. Haha, <laughs> why? Egbert, goddammit, will you shut your mouth and listen? Okay, but is something wrong? What? A while ago you talked to me and it sounded like you were in danger, that sounds like some people died, but you never told me what happened. Then I got distracted by a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah, something is wrong. Or was? A bunch of us died. The end. I don't really want to talk about it. Oh, are you sure? Yes, and not just because, oh, the clock is rapidly ticking down to something we are calling the critical moment. And now I don't know what that is so close, you reeking question geyser before it asks. But I'm your friend, aren't I? Oh god. Well, John, I can't handle talking about it, okay? I just got done uh, dealing with Gamzy. And I'm feeling pretty emotional about it, so please, no. Who is Gamzy? He was my best friend. Really? I thought Teresi was your best friend. Oh wait, maybe she was your girlfriend, I forgot. My think pan it hurts. It is presently threatening to make me its bitch, John. Is that what you want? Do you want your cool alien pal to become the bitch of a war dropping think pan? Such is the scenario before us. Sorry, I don't mean to be nosy, I just want to know some things about your situation. I am concerned. Gamzy was my very good friend, who was a goofy laughable bullshit clown until he went spiko and killed some people. I liked him a lot. I don't know, I guess my best friend is really just the guy who I happen to be feeling most sentimental to at the moment. Is that a fucking crime? Hey, no, I think I know how you feel. So he killed some people, and then what? So then I... It's okay, you can tell me. John, trust me, you wouldn't understand. It's just a troll thing. Humans wouldn't get it. You might think I was a shithead, but I can't deal with it now on top of everything, so let's drop it. Hmm, okay, if you say so. Oh, I can't believe I almost forgot I've been dying to know since I left the battlefield. Do you know if Rose is okay? Did it work? I thought I could rely on you of all people. Quite just not amused. It seems that Rose is okay. And she's also not Grimdark anymore. She's fine. She woke up alive on Duras. Really? That's the rule, John. You kiss a dead player in time, and their dream self takes over, assuming they still have one. Oh, wow. It's incredible you reached god tier status without even understanding the more mundane means of resurrection ever label. Wait, your unfailing clueless makes it the opposite of incredible. My mistake. So, I guess. It would not, it would not have worked on my dad, then. Or was this mom? No, but that is exactly what I wanted to picture happening behind the black curtain, John. You snogging up your dead-headed man loses. Thank you for that mental image. A rose's adult woman loses. Maybe a dead woman sweeps your senior as more your cup of sauce, since apparently you are not a homosexual or whatever that even means. 
not even to speak of your racist absurd qualms with the notion of incest, which again, still sort of wondering how that can even be a thing. Uh, <clears throat> is that your game, Egbert? Have you had your eyes on Madame Lalonde? You've been waiting for a convenient resurrection opportunity to bust out your most passionate smoosh motifs kept in reserve. And in front of a dead female offspring, no less. Just shameful. Well, she's a very pretty lady, but that seems like a really inappropriate thing to think about, Carcat. You don't say. What are we even talking about anymore? I don't know. I'm frankly pretty upset about finding them dead in the magic castle. I guess I was wondering aloud if something could have been done. Or at least maybe to talk about it without angry tyrants being involved. Exactly, you're where I'm backing down strategy lane. We've got to stamp that garbage out. We can't have you getting old and rose while we've got so many irons in the fire. Fuck loaded phrase, forgot I said that. Just lame your shit up and forget your stupid guardian. Like I did with my dear crap monster custodian who I adored in no way whatsoever. You are being a douche. Wait, what am I saying? You are always a douche. <laughs> yes, thank you. Hehehe, <laughs> your dad was a crap monster. Shut the fuck up, we were talking about something important. Rose, remember? Yes, she's waiting on Durs for your bomb to be delivered. It will arrive safely a little later. Oh great, how do you know it gets there? Jade told me. To do what is you do best. Dirtly firearms? Jade from further ahead on your timeline. Before my piece of shit clown for made everything terrible here, she and I were hammering out these plans. I talked to her across pretty much the full spread of her timeline until the scratch starts and the feed cuts out. So I have a sense of the whole picture here and it's my job now to put some things into motion. That's cool. It's nice to hear you are working together. I should press the chat and see what she's up to. You should sit your ass tight and do the fuck what I tell you the fuck to fucking do. Oh, anyway, she and Dave do a lot of rock breeding, accelerating the process significantly by exploiting time travel, as help for me and Kanaya since we were in charge of fog duties in our session. Fog duties? Wait, which one is Kanaya again? Don't interrupt, I'm following a train of thought. Okay, Kanaya is my other best friend and she was a hero of space like Jade, which means she's a stalker of the forge and is basically in charge of fox, which sounds retarded, I know. You breed the white frog to make the universe you want to make. It is a long, arduous process and I kind of fucked it up in my game, but that's a whole other story which I'll get to later, okay? Wow, okay. She and Dave went on a tag, which I'm sure he must have so coming, because I've never seen anyone explain time travel so shamelessly as him, not even Aradia. Aradia? Just another dead troll. Who cares? Stop phoning. She was already dead before she died. So she and Dave fought with him a while and long story short, he died. What? But it's fine, I guess that was his plan, like some bizarre useless last stand, even if he didn't tell Jade he was pretty freaked out until I talked her through it. Did she kiss him too? You are not supposed to kiss her, Mr. Noir. You are supposed to kill her. Oh, the kisses. Jade looks pretty freaked out by this. Yeah, right there, while Jack watched like a fucking creep, but it worked. OMG, Carcat, this like your shitty shipping grid is coming true before our very eyes. Haha, <laughs> remember when you made that ugly thing? Who gives a fuck about shipping or my loot will stranglehold over all topics concerning Romans? I'm still talking. He woke up alive on Durs and met with Rose. That was the end of the line for Alpha Dave. To my knowledge, he doesn't time travel after that, and he and Rose stay on Durs waiting for the bomb until you start the scratch. But I can't see either of them because of the blackout lingering around Rose for whatever reason. Nobody knows what's up with that. Regardless, his job is to plot a course through the wing to find the sun. When he does, either he or Rose will deliver the bomb. I don't know which. Now leave and never darken my door again. But no, they don't have dream selves left. Whoever goes will be risking their life for good, won't they? That would be the logical extension of those facts, yes. This is unacceptable. Couldn't I do it? I'm apparently immortal because of this god tier business, so the bomb probably would not kill me. Okay, but don't you think there's a remote possibility that going on a suicide mission to save all of reality would count as a heroic death? Hmm, maybe I could try to not be all that brave while I do it. You asshole, of course you'd be brave. That tends to be what happens when you do something really fucking courageous. Yeah, I just don't want to lose anybody else is all. That's just how it is. I've lost friends for way more pointless reasons. You're all out of options here. 
You'd be risking death just as much as they would, and they are better qualified to handle the mission as the Durst Dreamers. Jade's dream self is dead too, so she is out. Or to be more specific, her dream self is an overly emotional dog who went off whimpering somewhere. I'm pretty sure she will be completely useless. Oh, yeah, she mentioned something about that. She said she prototyped her dream self. What happened to that? She doesn't like to talk about it. Kind of a sore subject. Why? She thinks she's selfish and completely hysterical and I guess hates the part of herself she represents. But I mean, the thing is she spent a long time being dead and moving on. It's not like you can just bring somebody back and expect them to give a shit about all the stuff you think is important. Try to tell her that her fright self is probably nowhere near as despicable as she's making out with herself to be, I mean. Making herself out to be. You know what I mean. Look, I'm just saying. We've all got flaws, even her. And for all the shit she's given me on this very subject, she keeps herself dangling from a very high hook. She'd be doing me a major personal solid by making at least some attempt to get herself off. Wait, fuck, what did I just say? Wow, I meant let herself off. The hook, the fucking hook, it's a figure of goddamn speech. Raise his eyebrows. <laughs> Put those back down before my hot acid rage whiz burns them off your idiotic face. Okay, I'm putting them back down as not suggestively as possible. What were we even talking about? It wasn't this whatever this is. What is what this is? It's nothing you shit. It has been the conversational equivalent of us whistling through our snot bevels while touching each other in a propriety. Was was that another weird vortex slip of the tongue? No, that was me being worked up into, the, into this ridiculous fucking conniption and saying something inflammatory. God, how does that not be clear by now? Okay, well, what I'm getting from this, <laughs> aside from the possibility that Jade may or may not have kissed Doctorate at some point, is that neither of them will be able to help with the bomb plan. That's exactly right. The Pachama prodigy used his puzzle sponge today. Besides, Jade is responsible for other important parts of the plan. For some, for fun thing, you'll have to wait for her to send you the code for the quilts. You can't scratch the Misa without them. She got them from a denizen or will later on her timeline now that she lit the forge and woke the monster up. And those are really tough to kill, guys. Yeah. Did she kill him? Hell, if I know. Her explanation of the entire encounter brought down to, and I quote, shenanigans. Line for infuriatedly wake. Haha, <laughs> anyway, after she gives that to you, she then has to go through with the rest of the plan, which is making sure you also arrive after the scratch minus one of the Durst Dreamers, of course. The plan revolves around some really baffling hand wavy mumbo jumbo, which I don't really understand, but she told me to trust her about it because the info comes from a reliable informant, writing for Smack Tool. It involves something to do with a yellow lawn ring, which isn't the human word for it, it's just your word, it's so dumb I feel dumb saying it. Word for what? I guess your entire escape plan somehow privates critically around an unwatered piece of residential property. Doesn't matter what it means, Jade says she has this figured out and I don't have time to do much but trust her. The point is, she's all booked up and all too mortal, so she won't be delivering the bomb and neither will you. Okay, well, what about this? Since she's mortal and I'm not sort of and I don't need to do the scratch for a while, can I go help her? Maybe she could use some protection. Maybe that is what Dave was just trying to do when he temporarily died. Remember, Jack is still on the loose. He has killed Rose and Dave once, and me twice. No, 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 sweet bleeding genius Eggbird. You keep bragging about your mortality and then brainlessly announce plans to go off and do something heroic. You are going to have the shortest lifespan of any immortal in history. Sorry. Besides, it's a total non-issue. Jack wouldn't hesitate to stab you again. But he won't hurt Jade for some reason. If anything, you could use her protection. Really? I never noticed when looking through her timeline earlier. It wasn't until I was talking to her in those time frames and she told me. He just keeps following her around. I can see him off in the distance in some frames, just lurking there, shadowing her movements. It's incredibly disturbing. Lin just around her until the scratch begins and I lose the feet. Never once doing anything threatening. She says she thinks it's because Jack inherited loyalty of her losers. If she's right, I guess the losers really did offer her the most protection possible by prototyping itself, all by by dooming us all, the idiot. It does, it's actually kinda cute. Claire, sadly, he holds no such loyalty to any of us here. He regards us all as ripe for the repeated skewering. Oh fuck, maybe we should have all just dressed like Jade. I can't believe this joke of genius only occurred to me now. I don't think he would be fooled. Dogs have pretty good senses of smell. It was a motherfucking joke. Will you look at this mess? Anyway, it doesn't matter anymore. If we can write this out for a little longer until the critical moment and Dave Rose can destroy the sun, Jack shouldn't be a threat. 
Conveniently. If they are successful, that will signal the beginning of our own escape plan. What is your plan? Apparently, the explosion will be so huge, it will be visible at great distances throughout the furthest ring. Even from different sessions, like yours and ours. You won't get to see it, because by then your session should be wiped out by the scratch. But we will. The plan is to use it as a beacon and travel there as a rendezvous point. Rendezvous with who? We've got people there. That what Jade tells me. Jade knows so many things lately, what is even her deal? Hell if I know, this is basically dream intelligence. Every time she goes to sleep, she has more to ramble about. She says I should go to sleep to find out, but I'm like, how the fuck am I supposed to be napping between making all these plans and getting persecuted by this demented honking asshole? So yeah, we meet in the aftermath of the explosion with our people on the inside, or I guess I should say outside. I don't think they can come with us, so. Come with you where? Who are they? Dead people. As for where, it's not like we are going to stick around there forever. That would probably be depressing, since we are not fucking ghosts. The scratch will reboot your session. Your whole universe, actually. So somewhere in the dreadful abyss, that new session will start up in its own sphere from scratch. Look at that, another pun because of using that fucking word every other sentence. Sentence kill me now. But that from scratch fucking lol session is what you are shooting for to the rise. The idea is for you all to preserve yourselves by escaping there. Through the lawn ring? Yes. Once you are there, you will help us find our way there too. And then we can all finally figure out what the fuck to do with the rest of our lives. Oh, so then this is how we are supposed to meet. That is kind of exciting. Yeah, I guess if enough of us are alive by then to meet. So I guess you're not worried about it turning into a huge sloppy makeout fest anymore. Uh, right, ha ha ha, John. You and Veska better keep your hands to yourself, for everyone's going to be really uncomfortable. No interspecies funny business, is that Claire? Black, I am convincingly flipping my lid about this, waving my arms around a lot and making all my best jelling faces. Wow, look at that, it's time to change the subject again, huh? Poof, subject changed. If it works and you wind, uh, wind up in the new session, <coughs> that's what, that's why it'd be important to make sure one of the dirt we must stays with you so it can help guide us there from the wing. Once I pay other players in the new session, like alternate universe versions of ourselves or such, probably. But those chums won't know anything about us or all our plans. Why would they? Yeah, it's just kind of a weird thought. So out of everything we just talked about, this is a thing that has you tripping globes, whatever you say. But I guess it's sort of comforting too. If also Dave have to go off and die, at least I get to see them again in a way. Even if I will only be alternate universe John to them. Maybe my dad will be alive in that session too. Okay, maybe, but before you get too excited about that, you've got to make sure you got there first. Which means, you have to do what I say and stick to the plan. You need to focus on getting ready to start the scratch. The game doesn't make a hard reset that easy to pull off. Once you reach your dates, the game throws everything it's got at you. Which is one reason why you're the best guy for the job, because of your super purpose and silly windy bullshit. Okay, I'll do my best. What should I do right now? Get prepared. Make all the equipment you think you'll need. Stay out of trouble. Wait for Jade to send that code. Wait for me to contact you for the first time and do your best to humor him while he ignorantly attempts to flame you back into the puddle of slime you crawled out of. Please. Oh man, our first conversation ever. I can't wait. Yeah, but can I just say something in my defense before that happens? I don't actually hate you and I never did. I was deluding myself. Deep down I'm sure I was always pretty okay with you. Thanks, Karkat. It wasn't a fucking compliment. The scrapbook is now in hopeless disarray. Feel free to examine the clippings while I tidy. So we can now click on the panels to find out some stuff, but I don't want to do this yet. Because it's pretty late and I want to do this in the next stream. Because we are nearing the end of Act 5. The end of Act 5 ends with a huge animation. <laughs> so we don't even have enough time for this. So then, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a nice day or a nice night. And I hope I will see you again next week where I will play Dark Souls 3. Oh, I, I pressed the wrong button.